starting off with 180. 220 grit. Before vinyl wrapping, it's best to get rid of any dents since the vinyl will conform to those dents. I don't mind the minor ones, but I wanted to fix this hole on the side. To patch it up, I looked at metal epoxies, metal putties, and body repair kits, and I just wanted something simple to flatten the surface, so I chose Platinum Patch. It's waterproof and you can use it on metal. However, it's porous and vinyl wrap doesn't stick well to porous surfaces. This was one of my questionable choices in this project, but I used 3M Tape Primer 94, which is recommended if you're vinyl wrapping a porous surface. It's working now and I hope it'll last. I just finished platinum patching everything with that crystalline silica compound. It may have went a little overboard. I did it everywhere. <laughs> it's hard to stop once you start. I'm gonna test the adhesion of my vinyl wrap. This is brushed gunmetal from our vinyl wraps. I chose it not because it was cheaper, but because it had this color. It's gunmetal. I didn't want black and I didn't want silver. I wanted something like in between. What I'm gonna do is an adhesion test and I learned how to do it from YouTube. I highly recommend this playlist. It's called like Cookies Tips on Vinyl Wrapping. Here's my strip. It's 25 millimeters wide by 300 millimeters long. I'm gonna see how it conforms to these dents here, how well it sticks to this patch, and how well it sticks to this patch, which is actually covered in about two coats of this DuraClear soft touch varnish. The only thing I don't have is a small spring scale. I have this luggage one. What I'm gonna be looking for is for the force to be at least halfway, which it could barely tell, but this is what I have, so I'm just gonna use it. One of the tips he's had was if it's a textured surface is to get a nylon brush and just brush it in there to get proper adhesion. I'm gonna wait 15 minutes for this to adhere and then we're gonna pull it and see how well it sticks. It's been 15 minutes and I just wanna show you how the vinyl wrap actually conforms to those dents. It's like nothing. That's not good. I should feel a lot more resistance, but it's not jerky. Oh, did not like the patch. Feels a little better right there. Oh, <laughs> did not like that patch either. The adhesion is much better just on the surface by itself. Oh man. Right now I'm cleaning and I wanted to show you the sponge. I'm really loving it. It's a sandpaper sponge. It's able to get rid of all the adhesives that was left over from the plates and some of the patches were kind of big. It took off all the extra bits of patches which I didn't want because it wouldn't have been good for the final wrapping. This one I kind of took it all off. For cleaning on the inside you have these like black marks on the rails and if you just rub this on there it just removes it. See, and I can't do that with a sponge or a brush. It might be like scratching things, but I don't know. For me right now, it's doing great. Here's some adhesive that I could probably rub off this. Anyways, really great sponge. Not meant for cleaning, but perfect if you want to really clean things off. So far, I've done four out of seven panels. It's not easy. <laughs> There's a learning curve, but I've done the inside of the doors. I did the top. I did this door and this is the last one I did. Everything went pretty smoothly so I can't wait to finish the rest. Let me show you some of my mistakes. For my first mistake, I had no idea why this large scratch appeared. But while I did one of my panels, I figured out how I was scratching it. I was leaning my nylon brush too far to the side, causing the plastic part to rub against the vinyl wrap. So keep your brush straight up and down and not to the side like I did. <gasps> no! I was scratching it! God. When I was cutting, I was pushing up against this rail, which worked really great. But then I decided to cut from here, which allowed me not to really push up against the rail. And then my blade went, Erk. make sure that blade having firm pressure against a rail or whatever, so you get a good cut. So it was this side and it's kind of hard to tell, but you could see where I added an extra strip. It's barely noticeable. So I did that when I had problems with the cutting. This is what happens when you don't follow the grain for this brush metallic trim. Pretty much stands out. It doesn't really blend in. You could kind of see it, but I think it looks better than it did before. On this side, I didn't do a patch, but it wasn't that bad, but it's hard to get like a clean line 
against that silicone. I thought I should walk you through how I'm doing the vinyl wrapping because it's the most intimidating other than the oven cleaner. So this is my vinyl wrap. It's 60 by 84. I made sure to measure out the dimensions of what I needed. Make sure to have a plan on how you're gonna cut everything. Also, make note of the grain if you want the grain a certain way. I'm on this last panel, then I have the sides to do. Let me just show you how I cut this off of the roll. So I put my weights down to keep it from rolling. All I have to do is cut out 12 and a half by 34. Here's my piece, and I just wanna show you how much texture there is. It's just enough to go over the trim and the bottom. If it's too skinny and your panel's just off a little bit, then you'll like have empty space, which is what happened to me up here. It's about one inch extra on all sides. You could always go more than that. This is my Primer 94 station. I'm just trying to minimize any spills that might occur. I heard this stuff is pretty bad. I spill it everywhere. Plus it stinks. So I'm gonna put my respirator on. From all the videos I watched, some people really hate Primer 94. I think mostly because when you try to remove it from a car, it damages the paint and it's just a big hassle when you don't really need it sometimes, especially if you put too much. But in my case, I'm just putting it on something that I'd like for it to last for a long time. And I don't really care if the paint is stripped off. So here's Primer 94. What they recommend is you to put in a separate container rather than just keep it open. Putting it through this, what is this called? Oh my god, a syringe. Uh, let me blow the air out and then do it one more time. Here's my Primer 94. I'm just going to close this before I spill it everywhere. And what I'm going to do is put the Primer 94 in here. There you go. See? Oops. You gotta be careful. And then I have a tiny paintbrush. First, I'm gonna paint my platinum patches because those are the porous ones and it's two coats. Sitting my timer for five minutes to let that dry. But everything I've read about Primer 94 is to apply a ridiculously thin coat. And I just, I just run it along the edge. And about every six inches or so, load up my paintbrush again and I'm just gonna do this wherever there's an edge you want to make sure everything you have is ready to go before you apply this because after 45 minutes it loses its adhesion which you would think 45 minutes is a ton of time it's not when you're doing this for the first time and you're just like what am I doing uh, after you're done painting on the primer 94 put it with a, an alluded container that kind of helps so you don't have to smell it and it doesn't all evaporate and one thing i forgot because i was just talking 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 i forgot to spray isopropyl alcohol this is 50 50 solution of 50 percent alcohol 50 percent water i forgot to wipe it down i'm gonna just try to do that around where i put the glue hopefully this next step done in 12 minutes are you kidding all right did i put the second oh i don't remember did I put the second coating? No, I didn't. Ugh. I gotta do the second coating of Primer 94 on those patches. Oh God, I'm not wearing my respirator. Now to wait five minutes. Oh, great. Take your vinyl wrap, peel it by about six inches. Lay it like this. Make, try to make it as straight as possible. Keep it taut. So pull it out. Have your squeegee ready. Here, I'm just gonna push up along that edge. The less you stretch it out, the better. I'm just gonna go at a 30 degree angle back and forth. Keep it taut. <laughs> but don't push too hard because when I push too hard, then it stretches it and then it rips. Kind of gently for right now. And you wanna try to get any air bubbles to go out the bottom. You don't need heat in the beginning, I think. At least for this wrap. I tried heat in the beginning and it was a mess. I had a bunch of ripples. See this? Ah, see right there, I have a crease. I'm just gonna lift that up. And even though there's primer 94, it won't stick right now. So that crease right there, I'm gonna hit it with the blow gun until it disappears. Yeah, see, make sure it's all gone. If it's not gone, then you're just wasting your time. See, I'm not keeping it taut. When it gets to this part, it's hard to get my squeegee in there. So I'm gonna get a glove on. This is like a glove for doing your hair. I'm just gonna go back and forth with my thumb and just go row by row. Uh-oh, looks like there's something under. 
I know what that is. Yay, that's the hole. Sometimes it's hard for me to find those holes for the metal plate. So I'm just gonna do that before I lose it. Oh no. Okay, there we go. Keep it tight. Getting the very edge of the door lock. What I'm gonna do is just get my squeegee up in here and just try to push it up. Uh-oh. Keep it tight. It's hard to not re just relax and uh, drop it. What I'm gonna do is kind of lift this up just a little bit to get some of that air out. Not bad. Next, get your heat gun and I'm gonna push up the vinyl wrap up into the trim. Don't keep the heat gun on one place too long. If you do so, you could damage it. I'm just gonna wait and then just I just want to take a moment to say that I am not an expert. For example, it looks like I'm holding the heat gun too close to the wrap, and there are spots where the wrap shrunk too much, causing tiny creases. I can be a perfectionist, so I have to remind myself that if it looks good from a foot away, then it's fine. But do your research, I'm sure I made some mistakes. Take your heat gun, nylon brush, and rub that wrap into the textured surface, and it'll help adhesive get right into those grooves. After you do the heating up and brushing in, you can actually see where the vinyl wrap is conforming to like dents and all that, which is good because you want it to be touching all the surfaces. Next step is to cut really close to the surface and we'll get rid of any leftover air. Next step is to cut the vinyl wrap. Here's my NC cutter. What you want to do is get the side of the blade pushing up against that trim so you get a good clean cut and if you can get your fingernail to help push that blade up now i can kind of push in push that part in like that now to do the rest Woo! i'm gonna cut out this hole that's right here Hard to find the holes, so if you can get one hole, you can find the other ones. If you try to hit these holes with a heat gun, it will just like shrink up again, so no heat gun now. So here's how the vinyl wrapping looks. I would say cutting wise, I don't know, I was like in a hurry, so I didn't do it as well because I was videotaping. Now I just have these two big sides to do. Uh, if you're wondering why there's a fan in here, my husband came home, smelled it in here, and he said it smelled horrible, so I'm gonna have to do this somewhere else now. In my ventilated office off camera, I wiped down the surface with alcohol and applied my first coating of Primer 94 on the patches. Five minutes later, here I am applying my second coating of Primer 94 on the patches in a very, very thin layer on the edges. Now for this large piece of vinyl wrap. In an ideal circumstance, you'd have two people doing this, one person holding the wrap away from the surface while another person presses it down. But I was determined to do this on my own. When I did the other side, it was a mess. The wrap is very wide, so I was pulling on one side way too much, and I used the heat gun to remove a crease, which caused me to really stretch out the vinyl, which is what you don't want to do, especially for a flat surface. So the entire time I was battling these ripples that would not go away, even though I tried to heat shrink it back to its normal size. Looking back, I should have pulled the vinyl off further and try to heat shrink it again. In any case, this is how it looks when the wrap is going smoothly. No battling ripples or creases. What I'm doing different with this side is that I'm holding the vinyl wrap in the middle rather than on one side. And even though in the last clip I kept saying keep it taut, really you just need to keep the wrap off the surface while you press it down. I'm keeping the wrap at about a 45 degree angle from the surface and gently pressing down, making sure not to overly stretch the wrap on either side. To keep the adhesive of backing away from the wrap, I used a weight to hold it down. You can't see it, but there's a green two and a half pound plate that's on top of the backing sitting on the trolley. One of the tips to avoid scratches is to wrap your squeegee in a lint-free towel, but my towel must have picked up something as I noticed that I was scratching the surface. So I put on my cotton glove to finish up the wrap. Next, I rewrap my squeegee so I can use it to push the vinyl into the trim and to apply firm pressure against the entire wrap. Then, I was ready to heat set it along the trim and brush it in with my nylon brush. Remember to not tilt your brush too much to the side. <gasps> no! So you should see now that everything is pretty much right up in those dents, but within the dents I found air bubbles. So I'm gonna have to pop that and then heat shrink it. Here's another bubble right here. I guess I did that off camera. 
I used a pin to pop the bubble near the bottom, push the air out, and heat shrunk it. Here I am cutting off and removing the extra wrap. Before I reveal how it looks like with the wrap, I need to put the ID plates back in. Some of the holes are really tight and my 1 8 by 1 4 inch rivets would simply not fit. Don't do this, hammering in the rivet won't work. I don't hammer the other side of your rivet. <laughs> Sometimes using the riveter to push in the rivet helps. Oh yeah. But in the end, it was easier to re-drill the hole so my 1 8 inch rivets would fit. Yay, there we go. One problem I had is that the riveter would jump out of my hand, scratching the vinyl. Oh, are you kidding me? I just scratched it. Boo! Ah, no! Ah. My solution was to cover the rivets with a shelf mat to protect the vinyl. Popping in the rivets was a lot of fun. This riveter is made in Japan from the 70s or 80s, and interestingly, it's from Swingline, which is a popular stapler brand. Woohoo! My trolley was missing two rivets in the partition. I already replaced this rivet, but it was too short, as you can see by this gap. If you see, it's kind of pulling away. For this side, I used a longer rivet, 1 8 by 3 8 inches, and it was the perfect size. Ah, there we go. Oh, that looks way more solid than this one. Then I did the same to the other side. Look, no gap. I'm done wrapping and putting all the plates back. I noticed that some of the plates are just like popping out. Some don't really fit where they're supposed to fit. This one's like lifting up a little bit, but I'm pretty happy with it. It kind of looks like I put a chalkboard on it. Sometimes when I look at it, it looks like it's chalkboard paint. I think the gunmetal is a little dark sometimes, but it just kind of changes color depending on the lighting. I turn off the light. I guess now you can kind of tell that it's a gray color. Next thing I'm going to do is polish up the aluminum and finish making the drawers. Here is my full size trolley from Delta Airlines. It was manufactured in And then I continue to sand with 120 grit sandpaper with the goal being to remove any leftover anodization. And, and it was almost enough to polish the trim and the entire inside of the trolley. Here is the before of my trolley. 